about half an hour, I'm heading off to get a train down to Devon in the southwest of England for a. I'm giving a talk with another graphic novelist in Exeter Library about our work. Um, it's about seven this evening, and then after that, I'm going to meet my friends who live in Devon and spend a few days with them over the weekend. Um, public speaking is something that I really struggle with. I'm quite a shy person naturally. Um, being in front of people makes me incredibly anxious. Um, and I have a tendency to just, my brain just freezes up when I'm in a position like that that makes me anxious. This year though I've been asked to take part in a few public speaking uh, engagements and I'm really happy to be asked, it's such a wonderful thing that uh, someone would ask me but I really do struggle with it. I mean already today I'm feeling a little unwell at the thought of what I have to do this evening. But my plan is just to keep doing it until hopefully uh, it loses its fear. I've done enough. I used to be nervous of recording podcasts with people. I've done enough of those now that I'm not, it doesn't really make me anxious. So I'm hoping that this is going to be the same. So yeah, I, I did one this year at LCAF in the summer and I have another one next month. So yeah, I'm hoping if I keep doing it, it's going to get less terrifying as time goes on. This time around, I haven't been too nervous leading up to it. Yesterday was my birthday, so that was a nice distraction. And I've got a nice holiday straight after the talk is over. So that's also really nice. I can just think of that. Um, Devon's quite far from London. Um, it's about three, three hours plus on the train. And I'm actually looking forward to having that train time by myself to just get some work done. I've got quite a lot still to do roughing out my graphic novels. So I'm gonna be doing that on the train there and back. And yeah, I hope to film a little bit of my time in Devon and include that on the vlog for you to see. And I'll also talk about how the talk goes when I get back. It's funny with public speaking, the thing that people always say to me when I say I'm nervous is, oh, you'll be great, which is really nice. And they're trying to reassure me. But um, I had a talk with a friend once who we were talking about the fact that actually we're not good at it. And um, so when people tell you, oh, you'll be great, it's kind of not necessarily true. And I still think there's value in doing it anyway and trying to get better at it. But yeah, when people say you'll be good or you'll be great, I always want to say, well, that's not necessarily true. My brain does literally freeze up um, with nerves. And so when people are asking me questions in front of an audience, I find it really hard to give good answers. And I always go away afterwards thinking, why didn't I say that? Why didn't I say this? And I know that's completely normal. I mean, even in social situations, people do that after the event. They kind of pick over what they said and they worry and they wonder why they didn't say this instead of that. Um, but yeah, there's, there's a part of me that just thinks I'm not great at it. Then again, I mean, if I had the opportunity earlier in my career to go to a talk by someone like me who had the experience that I've had now in publishing and in comics and illustration I you know I did used to sometimes go to talks like that and I always appreciated hearing from people um, <clears throat> so yeah I just feel like in a way I have to try my hardest to get over this sort of anxiety that I have and get better at it because I'm sure I will with time um, there are certain things that I that illustrators and writers and artists do to make extra income which I have no interest in doing like teaching I don't really want to do it uh, you know leading workshops things like that especially with children you know school things I really can't do that so giving talks it's like an hour or an hour and a half I, I just have to reach a point where I do it enough that I can just get through it it's interesting actually working with because I work in the theatre and when I first had a public speaking engagement, it was a few years ago, quite a few years ago now in Nottingham, I asked some of the people I work with who are actors how they deal with their nerves. And I was quite surprised because there is a tendency to assume actors are kind of extroverts and <laughs> they love attention, but it's not necessarily true. And the two people that I spoke to about it, one of them said that she had stage fright so badly she had to start taking beta blockers um, to even be able to do what she does. And the other one said, um, said, oh, it's completely different what I do. He was saying what I do is I go up on stage as a character and what you're doing is going up as yourself. And he was saying that would terrify me having to go up and talk about myself <laughs> as myself.
because at least when you're playing a character there's a distance there and the audience aren't sort of <laughs> potentially judging you on you know on who you are as a person but uh yeah i was it was just almost reassuring to find that even people that are on stage for a living don't necessarily find it easy
Yeah, we had someone this morning. Did I you? think we got someone else this afternoon. Like, because now the. Hi everyone, I'm now back from my Exeter Devon trip, the talk that I was uh, talking about at the start of this episode and I wanted to do a little recap because actually the talk was really wonderful um, and I thought it'd be interesting to compare my nerves at the start of this episode to how I'm feeling about it now. Um, so Exeter Library was really lovely, it was in a really nice small room with sofas and not a huge number of people, but enough people to make it just a really nice group. Um, anyone that sees this that came along that day, thank you very much. Um, you made me feel kind of very welcome and relaxed. Um, also, a lot of credit has to go to my co-speaker and the guy that was hosting the podcast, uh, Steve Camden, and my co-speaker was Geoff Winterhart, who's a graphic novelist. Um, both of those guys were so nice. Uh, it just felt like chatting with some friends. Um, and the whole thing had such a relaxed atmosphere. Um, I think something actually, when I thought about it afterwards, something that really helped was that I didn't have to hold a microphone and talk into it. Because that kind of thing, when I've been in busier rooms before, has made me feel anxious, that whole worry of can people hear me? Um, the theatre that I work at for my sort of day job, give talks sometimes, and there's always issues with people not being able to hear. So it's something I'm always, that's running through my head if I'm speaking in front of a group of people. And I know that I'm a quiet speaker, so, but when there were just a sort of small number in the room, it felt like that didn't really matter. And it could be kind of relaxed and I didn't have to worry about the volume of my voice or the kind of weird feeling of hearing your voice coming back to you over a, an audio system. Um, so actually it was a really lovely experience, um, big thank you to my lovely friend Katie Green who lives in Devon, who uh, met me before the talk, came to the talk, she sat and knitted through through my talk, um, asked questions, which is always really good because people are shy to ask questions, um, and then she drove me to where she lives in uh, much further south in Devon. It was quite rainy over the few days that I was there, but we still managed to have a lot of fun. At one point, she had to drive to uh, John Arbin Textiles, which is a textiles mill um, right on the other side of the county. So it was quite a long drive and she had a bunch of stuff to collect from their warehouse. Uh, so we hired a van and we drove across the whole county um, to collect her things. And it was really lovely seeing John Arbin Textiles. Um, never been in a sort of woolen mill or anywhere where they make wool before um, it was really exciting they have lots of old sort of antique machinery that they use there 
Um, it's really great to see the people there were fantastic. So thanks a lot to Sonia for showing me around um, and everyone there that I talked to. My friend Katie Green also has a, a podcast. It's to do with all the different creative practices that she does. She's a knitter. She also sews her own clothes and she's also a, an illustrator, writer, comic artist. She does all sorts. Um, she actually designed these beautiful cushions that I have in my studio now. This one's a bit crumpled because I've been sitting on it, um, but it's really lovely. Uh, there's a pair of these, which is her British sheep breed uh, illustration that she made. She sells that as prints, uh, tea towels, I think, cushion covers. So definitely have a look at Katie Green Bean's shop. Uh, she has an Etsy shop and also her podcast, uh, the Green Bean podcast, which you can find on YouTube. I'll include a link. Um, if you're interested in watching people do their creative work and also seeing her adorable dog, Jack, then that's well worth a look. Also on the theme of public speaking, I'm currently preparing for a talk that I'm doing. I'm going back to Devon, to Plymouth University. Um, I don't know why all my speaking engagements have been in Devon this year, but it's quite nice because <laughs> I can see Katie. But um, I'm doing a talk there next week uh, and this one is a bit different. This is uh, one where I have to give a presentation on my own for 45 minutes to an hour, which is an incredibly long amount of time <laughs> when it's just you talking. Uh, I've not really done that before. I've done an eight minute presentation about my work before and I've done panels which have maybe been 45 minutes, but I've been there with a bunch of other people. So, um, Actually, since the Exeter talk, I've noticed a, a slight change in my attitude to this. I'm still horribly nervous at the thought of uh, the Plymouth talk next week, but I'm actually, a little part of me is kind of excited. <laughs> um, and that's definitely never happened before. So I'm hoping that's the start of me being able to do this stuff without feeling so nervous, which I think will help me um, just be better at it and not have the horrible anxiety that I've had in the past. Yeah, I've been preparing a PowerPoint presentation and a sort of script to use uh, the talk next week. I'm just trying to channel and be inspired by some of the more confident people that I know who do this sort of thing all the time. And hopefully I can put myself in that kind of frame of mind next Friday when I'll be talking uh, at the university. I'll report back on the vlog again after the talk is over uh, and let you know whether I managed to enjoy it, um, how it went and how it was speaking for 45 minutes. I'm worried about how my voice is going to hold up because <laughs> I'm just not used to talking for that long without a break so it'll be very interesting. Another thing that I've done recently is I've just come back from Harrogate where I went for the Thought Bubble Comic Festival. Um, I've done Thought Bubble not every year over the last five or six years, but quite a few times. Um, and this was the first year it was in Harrogate instead of Leeds. Uh, I really liked Harrogate. Uh, it was very small. It was very easy to reach everything. Um, and the festival seemed just as good as it always has been. The journey to Harrogate was slightly stressful because there's been a lot of really bad flooding in Yorkshire recently. Um, and it was affecting the trains the day that I travelled up. Um, I got a notification on my phone saying that my train had been cancelled, so my partner and I left early to go to King's Cross to see whether we could jump on an earlier train that my um, Avery Hill colleague Ricky was going to be on. So we got to the station early, then found out that in actual fact my train service had been reinstated and his had been cancelled. So Ricky got on my train. They cancelled all the reservations, which is always super stressful if, you're, if you've booked really early so that you'll have a seat reserved and then they cancel it due to crowding at the last minute. It's not fun. <laughs> um, I had people sitting in the aisle of the train next to me, you know, standing. Uh, yeah, and people getting frustrated and tired. So that wasn't a lot of fun. Luckily on the way home, um, the trains were fine. And I actually managed to spot a red kite from the window of the train on my journey back, which was a really nice. I had intended to record a lot more with my camera during Thought Bubble, but it's such an overwhelming and kind of exhausting weekend. I was so busy and so tired at the same time that I just did little snatches of filming as and when I could. But I'll show you what I did manage to record and hopefully that will just give you a little flavour of what Thought Bubble is like.
can't get money now. I also thought in this episode I'd do a really quick kind of roundup of just some general life stuff. Um, I've been talking a bit on the vlog over the last few episodes about like trying to set myself targets um, and then reporting back to you on the vlog whether or not I've managed to make these targets and these habits that I'm trying to improve happen. I met my writing targets early on in the vlog, that was probably the first few episodes when I was talking about that. Um, and I also talked about how I wanted to get more organised with my accounting um, as a self-employed person. You do a lot of, spend a lot of time doing accounting and tax stuff and I wanted to do monthly accounting instead of, you know, one big crazy session at one point in the year when I suddenly needed to get it all in order. And I've kept that up uh, this year and it's been brilliant. I've actually kind of enjoyed my short little accounting sessions. But then it occurred to me that I hadn't really been talking much about the things that I've been failing to do, <laughs> which for me, it's never really work related. I'm very disciplined when it comes to work. I love the work that I do and I never find myself struggling to do it. Um, I'll say exercise is an area that I've, I've not been brilliant at. I think in the early part of the vlog, I showed a couple of times when I went running uh, in the spring and I've really not been running since then. <laughs> I must admit when it comes to running I don't like it at all. I tend to feel enthusiastic in the spring to do it when it starts to get warmer and the parks are looking quite nice which is exactly what happened this year. I went for a few runs at the start of the year um, and after that I just don't want to do it. I do exercise, I have an exercise bike and what I enjoy doing is putting something on the TV that I, that I enjoy and just exercising in front of that. I just find that I can keep it up regularly and I can actually do more hours, much more time than I would if I was sort of trying to fit runs in. Just my general reluctance to have to put on running gear and go outside when it's possibly, you know, rainy or cold. Um, I find that I'm much more able to keep up the bike regularly. And there are long periods where I do sort of five, four to five days a week, really good sessions on the bike. So. I'm not quite keeping up the exercise plan that I had anticipated with more running this year, but I am keeping up with the bike. Another thing that came up recently was that I had my my first over 40 blood test where uh, in the UK they contact you when you have your 40th birthday to have a kind of general health check. Um, and all it involved was uh, having my blood tested for some general things. The only result that came out of that was that I was told I had slightly elevated cholesterol, which I don't think it was very elevated because they didn't call me in to talk to me. They sent me a text message, kind of a slightly alarming text message that just said, elevated cholesterol, follow this link to uh, see what you can do about it. And that was kind of odd because I've never really uh, thought that that might be an issue. But I do eat a lot of uh, dairy and things like that. So it made me think about some changes I could make. So my approach was to think of the things that I have every day that might not be the best 
for cholesterol. So that to me was milk, um, which I have every day and I have several cups of coffee a day, sometimes cereal occasionally. Um, I've recently cut a lot of cheese out of my diet. I used to eat cheese almost every day um, and I haven't been doing that over the last year or so. But I was also in the habit of having buttered toast every single morning for breakfast and that's another thing I've changed. I've switched to porridge. It was kind of interesting just to think about ways that I could maybe make my diet a little healthier. I also wondered because the test came shortly after my actual birthday where I'd, I'd had a lot of treats. I wondered whether my cholesterol was <laughs> elevated because of that because my birth, I don't know if I mentioned this, but my birthday was the day before my Exeter talk. Um, I had done quite a lot of baking uh, for my partner and I, his birthday's just before mine. I'd made flan, which is uh, Mexican creme caramel, quite a lot of that. Um, that's one of his favorite desserts, but he's also not got a terribly sweet tooth. So I ended up eating quite a few of those that he didn't want. Also for my birthday, my treat was, uh, I really wanted to make cannelée, which are a French dessert. I don't think it's you can call it a pastry because it's kind of made with a batter rather than with a pastry, but it's a French dessert anyway. Um, I filmed a little bit of that, so I'll show you that. Um, but yeah, there was a lot of baked stuff that I ate. And also when I stayed with my friend Katie and Devon, we had a deep frying day <laughs> where we, um, we made donuts from scratch, which was really, really fun. Um, and we also made samosas from scratch and that was great, but obviously um, deep frying isn't great for cholesterol. <laughs> so I wonder whether my, my level was just extra high because of all that um, birthday and holiday stuff. But in any case, it's been interesting to reassess uh, my diet and try and look at ways of being a little bit more healthy.